different uh, uh, groups of people have uh, you know a kind of uh, different attitudes or you know reaction to the war you know for those who are you know, older people and those who have a very good background in religion you know they tend to uh, accept the war you know with resignation uh, knowing that uh, it is something you know inevitable and for the young, young uh, for the other people you know those who have no faith or those who do not believe in the life after death you know they react to the world in a different totally different way they would try to uh, accumulate as much wealth and money as possible and try try to uh, you know spend the money enjoy life as possible as much as they can how do the vietnamese people feel about the american presence in vietnam well I think that the great majority, you know, realize that we need the American state very badly. And we know that without the American help, you know, and without the American presence, the fighting men over there, I mean, right now, we wouldn't be able to stand the communists, you know. The alarming rise in drug abuse across the country, as well as here at home, has caused citizens to become concerned. This concern is evident here at SMU today as a seminar on drug abuse gets underway. The symposium will last three days and is being sponsored by the North Texas Council of Governments, the SMU Law School, and the Southwestern Law Journal. All sectors of the Dallas community are scheduled to participate. One of the speakers on today's program was Dr. Gene Paul Smith of Stanford University. After he made his presentation, I asked him about the seriousness of the drug problem in America today. Every indication that we have now is it's extremely serious. Uh, there's a, a very serious problem in the large cities all across the country. Uh, there's greatly increased experimentation with drugs on the part of young people. There's a heavy use of drugs on the part of adults, uh, older persons in our society. Uh, the indications in other areas are not as strong, but the ones that we do have that are fairly good are really quite alarming. Dr. Leo Hollister with the Veterans Administration had this to say about the use of marijuana. The phenomenon of widespread marijuana use is a comparatively recent one in the last decade. It's been the result of the same sort of promotional activities that we use to introduce new brands of cigarettes or detergents or whatever. That is, uh, some people who, for one reason or another, believe this is a good thing have persuaded a great many people that it is. Now we have to find out whether it's possible to persuade people that using drugs isn't a good thing.
For the second time in less than a week, a major educators convention is being held here at the Tarrant County Convention Center in Fort Worth. Today's activities of the Texas Elementary Principals and Supervisors Association were made up primarily of registration, a golf tournament, and visitation of certain Fort Worth schools. The featured speaker for the first general session this evening is Will Wilson of the U.S. Attorney General's Office. We talk with the president of the association, Warren W. Green, about some of the aims and goals of the convention. In the past few years, we have had more and better programs and materials of, of the audiovisual type. This is one type of material that has helped us a lot. Another type is all kinds of varied levels where children can work on different levels. Uh, if a child's in the fifth grade, you have reading material on a second grade level or up to seventh or eighth grade. This is one of the things that we need and is most helpful. This is the first time in this century that the president has had two or more of his nominees rejected by the Senate, and only the fourth time in history. Do you uh, see this as a weakness on the part of uh, the president in getting legislation and nominees through the Congress, and is he going to experience serious difficulty of this nature? I don't think so. Not if, not if he keeps his cool, as the kids say. Uh, I don't think this, at least, at least just speaking as one member of the Senate, and I think I'm fairly conversant with what most of us feel. I don't think most of us uh, voted against Judge Carswell to try to find a way to embarrass the President of the United States. Now, he's interpreted it this way. Basically, if, if I were he, I'd be very unhappy with a fellow by the name of John Mitchell right now. There's no way in the world the President of the United States can know everything that's going on. He has to conduct the foreign policy of the land. He has to worry about the various uh, domestic problems. And why in the world the Justice Department wasn't able to find out some of these things about Judge Carswell's background before the nomination was sent to the Senate, I don't know. But if I were the uh, President, I'd be finding the answer to that question. 